Before initiating any endodontic treatment procedure, a proper diagnosis should be made. I'm Dr. Javier Rajan and let me guide you through the steps of how you take a patient history. Well, subjective and objective information is what we are going to be talking about here. Subjective information is what you get from your patient in the form of their complaints. Objective information is what we as clinicians obtain when we do a few tests on these patients. When you combine the subjective and the objective information, that's when we usually derive at a diagnosis. Hi, so what brings you in today? Oh, doctor, I've been having this pain. It's so painful the last two days. Okay, so painful the last two days. Mm -hmm. And? I can't, I can't eat, I can't sleep. It's so painful. Okay, so you cannot eat and also it disturbs your sleep. Yeah. If, if you have to grade this pain in a, in a scale of 0 to 10, 0 being no pain at all and 10 being extremely painful, oh, yes. how much grade would you give this? I think 10 long. Ten. Oh, that is a lot of pain. Yes. Okay. And since when have you been having this? Is it just two days or you had it earlier? Um, two days back. Two days. Mm -hmm. Okay. And what kind of pain is this? Oh, very sharp pain. You know? it's very sharp pain. Very sharp pain. Shooting pain. Shooting pain. Is it radiating or is it just localized, just on that tooth? It's on the tooth. On yeah. the tooth. Okay. Is there anything that increases the pain? Well, I notice if I take a cold drink, mine really brings it on. Okay, so cold increases your pain. And yes. how and how do you get rid of the pain? Do you take any medication? Definitely, I uh, take Panadol. Oh, you take Panadol to relieve the pain. Mm -hmm. Okay. Did you notice any swelling or anything in that area? Um, no, not that I. No swelling. Okay. And uh, one more question: Did you have any dental treatment done on that tooth previously? Yeah, yes. So you had something that yeah. was it a filling or mm. yeah, it was a filling. It was a filling. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it was previously filled and mm. uh, you've been having some problem right now. Mm. Okay. Let me check, let me see what the, what I can find in my clinical test. Okay? Yeah, please. Well, you just witnessed a 30 second patient history and I'm sure each and every one of you realized that there was so much information that I could actually gather by just listening to this patient. Pain history is the most important thing when it comes to subjective information. And there are certain information the patient may not give you and we as clinicians need to give them a leading question. So let me take you through all those points that you need to know when it comes to pain history. Okay, so we're coming to talk about the pain history. So the first thing I wanna do is I want to know when did the pain start that is the onset and followed by the duration how long does the pain last I also like to ask this patient if it has progressed and also if there was pain related to any specific experience then we move on to localization is this pain localized to a tooth or to a quadrant. Sometimes we need to know if the pain radiates to other areas of the head and neck. This would be very useful in cases where patient is not able to identify the source of the pain but can relate to probably a pre-auricular area um, like a referred pain. Then I go to the severity. I always ask the patient to, to, to produce the intensity of pain in the form of, uh, in a scale from zero to 10. So I will tell the patient zero to assume zero as no pain and 10 to be the worst pain imaginable. So you have to understand this is subjective to patient judgment, okay? But it doesn't matter because um, our intention is to know the intensity of pain for that particular patient. Next coming to type of pain. 
Is it a sharp shooting kind of pain or is it a dull throbbing kind of pain? See, this again is very subjective, is a very subjective descriptor. But my point here is I get to know the role of the A delta and the C fibers. We will discuss about them in further presentations. Okay, so next we talk about the frequency. Is it intermittent or is it continuous? And I always ask these patients, how often do these episodes occur? And if they occur, for how long do they last? So if it is spontaneous pain, you have to understand, no stimulus is related to it. So sometimes patients tell me, oh, I wake up with pain at night. So you know, they have pain at night. And if the patient claims to have a trigger, then it means there's always a need for a stimulus. Stimulus can be cold, could be heat, biting, touching pressure or pressure on the gums. And last we talk about the lingering kind of pain. I want to know if this pain is lingering and if it lingers, I want to know how long does the pain persist after the removal of the stimulus. Is it say 0 to 15 seconds or does it last more than 30 seconds? So you have to understand sometimes pain can persist from minutes to hours after the stimulation. So these, these points are all very important because they actually tell you and uh, they tell you the kind of pain and this complete history will help us to, to, to con com come to a, uh, a provisional diagnosis. It really helps. I'm not telling that subjective information alone is needed. We also need objective information, which we as clinicians will do certain tests and we will obtain the results. So we need to combine subjective information, objective information, and also we need to do a radiograph. So you put all the information together and that is when we come to a diagnosis. Please note, do not treat until you know the cause of the chief complaint. So this is part one of my presentation. I will deal with part two which will be on the objective uh, questions. We are going to be dealing with the tests and also we are going to deal with the clinical examination.